This should be the intro, just us doing faces. <laughs> Poop and Pearl Podcast. No, no, no. Okay. That's it. That's it. Okay, great. That's you nailed it. it. Hello, and welcome to the Loop and Pearl Podcast, episode two. I'm Loop, but you can call me Louie. And I'm Pearl, but you can call me Jules. I crochet, but I don't know how to knit. And I knit, and I kind of know how to crochet. Just Last time bit. I kind of lied, I said I didn't know. You kind of have to know how to chain sometimes when For you're knitting. knitting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you do know how to chain. But that yes. doesn't really count. And I did do one crochet project. which She did one crochet. Which I will show in a future episode. What crochet project? I will show it in a future episode. Okay. So I came up with an idea for a segment because I wanted us to start doing little segments before we get into all of our fun mm -hmm. crochet and knitting mm -hmm. stuff. A, a way for folks to get to know us better in yeah. case you don't know us in person, which you probably don't. Yeah. And also for us to share just some things that we think you guys are going to dig. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And it somehow applies in some way to knitting and crochet. Uh, what is today's topic, Lou? Today's topic is inspirations. Ooh. A pretty broad topic that I'm sure we're going to probably touch on again in a future episode. But for today's episode, I want to talk about what our, um, what is the first thing that comes to mind when you hear the word inspiration? So our personal inspiration. Mm -hmm. For our for work. Our work. Yeah. Cool. So Very you, cool. I'll start. Yes, please. Because that'll help. Yes. You out. When I think about inspirations, the first thing I usually think about is amazing storytellers because that is something that I really uh, admire in no matter what the craft is, I really like... Or medium. Or medium is. I really like storytellers. I really like people that can take their creative process and turn it into an amazing story. Mm -hmm. And so the first person that came to mind was Shigeru Miyamoto, mm -hmm. who is the creator of Super Mario and Legend of Zelda, just a legend in the video game industry. So the reason why Shigeru Miyamoto really inspires me is because he took his creative medium, that being video game design, mm -hmm. and he was able to tell amazing stories and create incredible things based on stuff that he saw in his regular life. So something that I often think about is I could have been a million different artists. I could have been a music uh, artist. I could have been a director. I could have been an illustrator. But I went with crochet. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what really hooked me. Ha <laughs> <laughs> uh, And Shigeru Miyamoto went with video game design. And he ran with it. He turned it into his own thing. Um, the original Mar Super Mario Brothers, uh, which wasn't his first Mario game, but it was the big one, that game was built on the smallest itty-bitty file size. It was like okay. kilobytes. I think it was like 35 kilobytes or something like that, which is like a paragraph of text. And what? He, yeah, <laughs> seriously. Not, probably not even. It's an what? insanely like, it, tiny... Oh, so like a Word doc. Yeah, not even a Word doc. A Word doc would be bigger. So like a dot text. Wow. Yeah. And so he had to be so creative mm -hmm. when it came to that because his limitations were so vast. And so he had to you figure wait. out... <laughs> his limitations were vast? You mean, I mean, or his he limitations was... were so, so... <laughs> narrow. Narrow. There you so go. So he had to build an entire game with these crazy limitations. And then on top of that, he decided that he wanted to make a story to it. which. Right. So it's he, crazy. he added that layer of storytelling that wasn't there before and yeah. was not asked of him. Mm -hmm. I see. Yeah. It, it's just, he's just an amazing creative. He makes insanely amazing video games and ideas just right from the beginning. He, he just knows, he's just got this confidence of creativity that I just really, really admire. I think he's an amazing artist and huge inspiration to me. And then I know I went kind of long with that one. So I'll just quickly go through my second inspiration, which is I will not be doing him any service. Um, but another huge inspiration to me is Jim Henson. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know who Jim Henson is. Muppets all, you know, you know who Jim Henson is. If you know what a puppet is, you know then you, you know who Jim Henson yes. is. Yes. Uh, and the reason why Jim Henson is a huge inspiration to me, other than just being an insanely creative person, is the fact that he took a creative medium and he, that is lifeless and lacks emotion, 
and he brought so much emotion to it. So that's something that I really try as best as I can to do with my characters is to bring emotions to the table. Outside, I really want to start reaching outside of just like cute and happy, and I really want to start reaching towards other emotions mm -hmm. to pull heartstrings and stuff, uh, which can be difficult, especially when you're dealing with a medium like crochet, which is all cute and fun. Right. And Jim Henson took puppets and he made them people. You have a immediate connection with his puppets. And I think that is really inspiring. Um, and on top of all that, he's an amazing entrepreneur. Yeah. Uh, he had he shot for the stars. He wanted to compete with Disney originally, which oh, I didn't know is that. that makes a lot of sense though. Yeah, and it, that is a shooting for the stars <laughs> yeah, kind that's, of. Aim. That's shooting for the sun. Yeah, seriously. Uh, so I really admire. I mean, whether or not he accomplished his goal, he still aimed super high, and I really admire that in a creative person. It sounds like your inspirations are also based in admiration, mm -hmm. which I think it, it goes hand in hand. Like, why would you be inspired by something that you don't admire. respect or admire? Yeah. Right? yeah. And your inspirations are people-based. Yes. There are specific people right. that inspire you to try new things with your craft and expand crochet into something bigger than what it is, mm -hmm. like what Shigeru Miyamoto did with video games. Yeah, totally. Yeah, totally. that's super cool. So what are your inspirations? So the way I interpret this question is... Things that inspire me, because... Not people. No. Okay. Uh, and I think that says a lot about me. Uh, I'm an introvert and mm -hmm. a very visual learner. Mm -hmm. So when I am inspired by something, it's often a physical thing mm. and not a person. Right. Which is weird, because I'm also an actor and a musician. That's true. Uh, and sometimes when I'm, when I'm feeling really inspired to write a song... It's not because someone saying at me, it's because I have one sentence in my head mm -hmm. and I'm picturing that sentence, I'm picturing that text and I go off of that and I, and then I think of the emotions and the person behind that. But it's often an idea, if anything. Mm -hmm. That's like the closest I get to a person inspiring me. It's okay. the idea or a physical thing. I'll give you an example. Okay. <laughs> When I am inspired to make a new design, mm -hmm. it's often because I'm thinking of the city around me. I'm so inspired by San Francisco, the place right. we live. I feel like I would be inspired in any major city. San Francisco has inspired so many artists because it's mm -hmm. just so gorgeous and it has both nature and amazing architecture and the water as well as mountains and hills and crazy climate. It's totally unpredictable, and every area of San Francisco is so different. So when you look at my patterns, a lot of them are named after districts of San Francisco or specific landmarks in San Francisco, right. because yeah. I'll be making something or I'll find a stitch pattern I really like, but it'll remind me of, of somewhere place. in the city, and then I'm like, oh, I want to expand on that. Yeah. What, what do I associate with that place? Mm -hmm. What feelings, colors, textures, sometimes if it's... An architecture thing, I try to mimic the architecture. Mm. So in my last pattern, the Golden Gate sweater, it's very much inspired by the <laughs> right. Golden Gate Bridge, and it right. has these big oh, columns. Oh, the bars, yes. Yeah, the bars. So, and also the color, too, when I chose right, the course. color of the sample, because I wanted it to match the bridge. So there's an example. Yeah, I'm just really inspired by architecture and nature. and Like the snowy plover shawl? I, yes, that's another example. I made a shawl inspired by a bird that is um, endangered in San Francisco. It lives and breeds on Ocean Beach, which is the beach right outside of us. Yeah, which is where we live. We see these birds like all the time. They're so cute. They're the tiniest little white yeah. birds. And they're actually like this color white. And yeah. they have um, some black feathers and brown feathers too. And their babies are even smaller. And, uh, and they run like... <laughs> Yeah. And the, the reason why I named that shawl the Snowy Plover Shawl uh -huh. wasn't because I thought, oh, I want to make a shawl that reminds me of Snowy Plovers. It was, I found a stitch that reminded me of their feathers. And I thought, oh, oh. I'll incorporate this in a shawl so when I wear it, I kind of look like a Snowy Plover. Right. Yeah, you do. <laughs> totally. It looks like the wings. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Like huh. a wingspan of a shawl, wingspan of the bird. Great answer. Is it? I feel it's such I, a different I love answer. It. Yeah, I, I, that's why I really like it. It's because yeah. it's not what I was... A, that's not what I was expecting when I asked the question, which is exactly what I kind of wanted, was right. I wanted to be surprised. Yeah. So, yeah, 
And this is just what inspires me for knitting and uh -huh. what inspires me right now. I feel like if we were to move to New York, I would be so inspired by New York and all the yeah. visuals around me there. A lot of um, art. Uh, oh, yeah. Murals. I love, I love knitting yeah. in a place where I can look at a mural and admire the details in the mural. I like to do we that should ask. when I'm downtown, if I'm ever allowed to be downtown ever again. Yeah, <laughs> sooner or later. <laughs> um, we should ask what... I'd like to know what your inspirations are for anybody watching this, mm -hmm. um, just because I'm I'm inspired by inspirations in general, I guess. It's true. Yeah. One of the first questions you ask a stranger is, what is your passion? Yeah. And from there, the conversation turns into, like, what inspired that passion and why is that your passion? Yeah, true. You are always curious about what inspires people. Yeah. Yeah, I am. I am. It's a good thing. Cool. I'm glad. <laughs> but yeah, if you have any inspirations that you'd like to share with us, I yeah. we are reading the comments, I promise. So if you have any inspirations, let us know down there. If you saw the first episode, you've noticed something's different. The background. Oh, yes. The wall. The wall of swatches. Swatches. Sw <laughs> swatches. This is the wall of swatches or the wall of stitches. We mm -hmm. keep switching it, yeah. uh, but it started by framing some of my knit swatches for knitting. It's really important to figure out what your gauge is, so you knit a little swatch to figure out if you are on target. Um, not so much for crochet, though, but no. Louie had a really creative idea on how to incorporate crochet into the wall of swatches. So yes. Louie, take it away. So this is my newest addition to the wall of swatches. Um, you can see it's... Well, can you want to take it down? Yeah, Let's can I take it down and show? Yeah. So this is my newest addition to the Wall of Swatches, and it's actually three-dimensional art. So this is all held up. I mean, obviously, you can see that it's all crochet. Everything is crochet. What I think is really cool, though, is that all these are held up with pins, so they actually stick out a little bit. Here you can see it. I actually got stabbed by South America I got stabbed, earlier. too. <laughs> I, yeah, I got stabbed in the in, finger. In the earth, yeah. yeah. The pin sticks out of South America. Yeah, but... Um, you saw me talk about it a little bit in the last episode, maybe, but uh, yeah, I finally finished it. I really, really like it. I'm definitely going to be experimenting with that more in the future. Um, one thing that I really wanted oh, to lovely. try doing, but I don't know how much it's going to work for this background, is doing three-dimensional art that sticks out mm, of the wall. So, like, it would be like that. Yeah, like that, yeah. with, like, a little scene and maybe a background, but, but definitely just a little scene. But I yeah. guess it doesn't really show up No, I, th I think... I think last time when you said that, my first thought was to do that elsewhere in the house. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Where you were not going to be, like, leaning up against it. Or yeah, stuff. totally. Yeah. But, yeah, it's awesome, right? Like, look at that, yeah. that night sky. I'm really so proud cool. of it, for, especially for a first shot, you know? Yeah. Is the planet Earth upside down? Now it is. Oh, yeah. It it's, wasn't earlier. It's fun. So that's my newest uh, Wall of Stitches edition. Um, did you add anything? I haven't noticed. I did. So I think last time this wasn't here. Oh, right. Um, I'm pretty sure this wasn't here. Oh, I love the, this. This one I love. I love the color. Yeah. And then this guy hiding behind me was also not on the wall yet. Right. Um, and it's funny because this one is my favorite swatch that I've ever done. Yeah, I wish <laughs> I it came it through. Yeah, because you can't here. really tell. This is for my FIDI talk, mm -hmm. which is named after the financial district in San Francisco. Which is uh, where she used to work before work from home was a big thing. Now home is the financial district. Yes, yes, now home is the We like live that. in the financial we lived, district. We're in our office right now, actually. Yeah, we are. Next up, we are going to jump into the knitter's nook, and Jules is going to show us all the fun things she's been working on since the last episode. I'm so excited. Let's start with my latest design. It's called the Fog Whisper cardigan, and I'm wearing it. <laughs> yep. I'm wearing right. it. This is my prototype, so not my official sample, but this was the first version of this cardigan. And I wasn't expecting this to be my prototype. It was supposed to be my sample. Mm -hmm. I had this idea of cables all over the body, a foldable sleeve, so you can have, like, it cover your wrist or fold upwards. Mm. I like that uh, you can switch it. Yeah, and the foldable shawl collar, of course. Um, there are some things that went great and some things that did not go great, um, but that's okay because I was able to purchase more yarn. It was very affordable, and I made my sample, which looks much more foggy. Yes. It is much more gray. So this is what the back looks like. 
Isn't it beautiful? These cables are much easier than they look, I promise. It's an eight row repeat, and the cables are really stretchy. It's like ribbing and cables together, which I love. So you can really wrap it around yourself. Right, yeah. I'm gonna put it over your shoulders for now. It looks beautiful. The, the, wow, it looks, actually it looks good on me too. I know, it's unisex. So it doesn't have to be just. I didn't realize it was for, unisex. For women. It's not shaped in any way that would be um, only for. Oh my God, for, it's so soft. For, yeah, it's, it's. Uh, super wash merino wool. Bleh. Oh, it's super merino wash merino wool. wool. <laughs> I love merino wool. Yeah, and this is a uh, knit pick stroll tweed, and that's tweed just means these little flex in here. Yeah. And yeah, it has some other things in there too. The tweed is, I believe, nylon or, or something like that. It's got it's got a good stink to it too. Oh wow! Thank you. A it's, good stink. Uh huh. It's yeah, got a good okay. stink to it. Taking it back. <laughs> that's the thing. You're not allowed to touch it anymore. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna have more of a good stink after I wear it. Yeah, it will. <laughs> so the Fog Whisperer cardigan is now available on Ravelry and Lovecrafts. Mm -hmm. Now I'm gonna talk about my latest selfish knit. Not everything we do is for our designs. I knit a lot of personal items. And last time, during the stash acquisition section in episode one, I showed you all a beautiful purple skein of yarn that is black light reactive. It had little green flecks in it that glowed in black light. And he's, he's smirking because he knows. I decided to make this cowl with that skein of yarn. And I only needed that one skein to make this whole cowl. This is my design. It's called the Moraga Cowl, named after Moraga Street. Oh, there you go. Another in inspiration. City. Another San Francisco inspiration. And if we had the black lights now, you would see that the green is glowing. Uh, I made a little video that shows this off. It looks like a, I'm at a rave and I'm dancing to, <laughs> yes. to the black lights and the, and the strobes. So yeah, so this yarn was from uh, the Black Squirrel, which is a local yarn shop, and uh, was hand dyed by the owner herself. Where's the Black Squirrel? It's in uh, Oakland, California. So when I say local, I mean local to us. Local to us, <laughs> yeah. It was a special Halloween edition. I'm pretty sure that she still has this colorway in stock. She has a lot of other colorways that are actually more black light reactive than this one. They have a white base mm -hmm. to it and they really, really glow. She has a lot of really cool options. Yeah. It, it does look really cool. I wish that there was, well, sometimes I wish that there were more opportunities to be in a black light, but then mm -hmm. sometimes I'm really glad there's not. Uh, <laughs> but I, I do wish that uh, we had the opportunity to show this off, uh, the black light stuff, a lot more. Yeah. I it's love very this, cool. I love this cowl because it looks like a triangular shawl, but it's really a loop, and you just put it on over your neck and it doesn't mm -hmm. fall off. Yeah. So I'm really proud of this design, and it's still uh, one of my best sellers. So I had her make my mom one. Oh man, aunt. I've made wow. like ten of these. Yeah, that's it's a great. Insane. Yeah, it's a great shawl. So last time I didn't have any works in progress, but this time I do. I do. I do. I do. Oh yes, you definitely do. This is a test knit for another designer, and I'm pretty sure I'm allowed to show this. If not, we'll edit it out later. Sure. Uh, this is a pullover that I'm doing. I'm going to go this way. This is a pullover that I'm doing for Alicia Plummer. Uh, she already published a cardigan with this stitch pattern. Now she's doing a pullover version. So I've done the body. I've attached the shoulders and the sides. And now I just need to do the sleeves, which will be the same pattern as the body, this lace pattern. And then I'll do the neckline, which is why there's still um, knitting needles on the neckline. Right. And I'm, I'm debating whether she has two options. I'm debating whether to do the boat neck neckline that'll look a lot like this. Yeah. No added, not really any added rows at all. Just or, like bind off. Or a turtleneck. Oh, I'd choose that. This one? Yeah. Okay. Turtleneck is a risky move. And we also live in California and this is really thick wool. Yeah, when are you going to use it? So I probably won't wear a turtleneck And as you're going to wear something under it. But the it. turtleneck is so beautiful. Yeah. The pictures. Anyway, if you have an opinion, please put it in the comments. <laughs> yeah, let us know. <laughs> it's been Knit up really, really quick. She started yes. this, what, like this week? Yes, I did. Yeah. Oh, so. And I actually, I had to redo some of it because I read the pattern wrong. Yeah. Uh, but that's a test knit for you. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes things aren't um, uh, aren't totally clear because you're ed you're kind of helping the editor find the parts where it beca can become clearer or if there's any math errors, which there weren't any. Um, I just misread it. I think it was all my fault, to yeah. be honest. Um, yes, it's Chunky Yarn. It's from Plymouth. I believe it it, it's called Homestead, if you're interested in the yarn. I need to understand my thicknesses of yarn better, because this yeah. doesn't look Well, you're pulling, you're pulling it really tight. 
Um, a way you can tell is uh, wraps per inch is oh. a way to know how ch how chunky it is. But honestly, for me, I I do not assume the gauge mm -hmm. that I'm gonna get until I knit a swatch because yes, this this is chunky, but right. it, depending on the size needle I use and right, the stitch be. pattern I have, it could be a totally different gauge and a different project altogether. This, yeah. this knits up so fast because it's lace and it really opens up and so you only yeah. have to do a certain number of rows before you get the length that you need. Yeah. It's wonderful. I, I think Thank it's going to look really cool. I'm, very I'm excited, excited to show it next uh, Next time it'll be done. Time. I promise. I have a deadline. <laughs> Upcoming designs. Oh, upcoming designs. I'm really excited to show you all this one. This is going to be a free pattern. I like to do at least one free pattern a year because oh, yeah. I know not everyone is able to spend a lot of money on patterns, so I want it to be accessible to everyone. This is going to be my winter pattern that will come out the first week of December, and it still doesn't have a name. If you have a name idea, please put it in the comments. Right now I'm just calling it the winter hat, but I do not want to have a basic name like that. I want a name that that really goes along with the stitch pattern here, which is like a lacy arrow point. I was yeah. thinking maybe um, something to do with the ferry building in San Francisco, but I couldn't come up with a clever oh, name. Oh, because I could see the, yeah. It kind of looks like like fishtails almost. Yeah, it we're going to have to drive to the snow to take pictures of this. No, we don't have to do it in snow. We just have to find a nice... A nice background. We'll just make some snow. We'll make some snow. Yeah, perfect. Uh, I'm going to add a pom-pom to it. And oh, I yeah. think we settled on white. So this yeah. is going to be the pom- Oop, ignore the string. There we go. There's pom-pom. Yeah. I'm really excited about It looks about like that. an animal. It does. I'd put it on now, but it totally messed up my hair. Uh, it's a slouchy hat, and it will be free in December. And it knits up with just one skein of super bulky yarn. Crazy fast. Yeah, so I bought two more <laughs> skeins yeah. of the sample yarn I used. It's called Madeline Tosh ASAP. It's one of my favorite yarns ever. And I'm going to knit two more hats, and I'm thinking for the pom-poms. I'm so excited. I bought so many pom-poms, y'all. Yeah, she did. She bought like a pack of like <laughs> 10 of them. <laughs> uh, six of them, but yeah. I'm thinking for this one, definitely that pom-pom there. Oh, because the orange matches yeah, it? Yeah, isn't that cute? Yeah. I love it. That's nice. That one really looks like an animal. It does. And I'm I'm still debating on this I'm, second one. I'm leaning purple. Yeah, I, I'm leaning purple too. Yeah. but So yeah, that is uh, an upcoming design. Keep an eye out for that. Uh, also, I want to tell you about an upcoming design that will likely come out next year. I'm really excited that I finally finished this sample. You've seen me working on this forever. But, oh, this, yes. This yes. cardigan. Yes. I've been working on this for so long. And it, for no reason other than I would I just get hung up on how I want the design to be special. Right. I think I over I overthink sometimes and I it stalls me. Yeah, she's been pulling back, going back and forth, which I don't know how this must be so difficult to pull out when you're So yeah, I'll talk about the yarn. This yarn is a brushed alpaca yarn from Drops. I believe it's uh, it's just called Brushed Alpaca. And I held it double. So I'm holding two strands together as I'm knitting. Um, one of my hangups was I didn't know what color sequence I wanted. I definitely didn't want the body color sequence. <laughs> I didn't want the body color sequence to be the same as the sleeves. I wanted to do something different. And I also uh, did these little balloon sleeves. Uh, and they're really, really cute when I, I, fall when I put it on. In a pile know, of this. I know. It, <laughs> it's so it feels, soft. It feels like a cloud. It really feels like a cloud. alpaca, and I love it. Feels like we're holding Jimbo. Oh, we're holding our cat right now. He's out there really upset that I we're not this. letting him in. Yeah. Yes, and I like that I you made this too. decision with the sleeves. Yes. Yeah, because she was going to go long with the sleeves. I like the short Well, one. they're long, but they... Instead of being tapered at the end, yeah. like normal sleeves, they, they do like a balloon like a little... shape. I would put oh. it on now, but it, it would be a whole thing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so this is going to come out next year. If you're interested in testing it, please let me know. Oh, yes. Yes. It, oh. It's currently being edited. Uh, and it's, it's actually very simple. Mm -hmm. I would say that this would be a good beginner cardigan project if you are interested in making your first knit garment. Yeah. 
Yeah. Okay, I'm almost done. I know this one's longer than last time, but you took a while last time. That's true, and mine is a little bit shorter this time. We're so we're, great. we're evening it out. What have I not talked about yet? Um. Oh yes. Okay. Last but not least, I wanted to let you all know that I'm going to be part of the Indie Gal, which is a gift along on Ravelry. This is an annual event where independent knitwear designers opt in and they have a sale the week of Thanksgiving. And that sale is to entice knitters to download those patterns at a discount and start making their gifts for Christmas. Ah. So by the time this video is out, the Indie Gal will be underway. If you are a Ravelry user, please check out the Indie Gal group where all the information will be about the discount codes, how long they last, how long the gal goes, and what prizes you can win as you post your finished project photos. Right. I forgot that was a whole part of it, is that you... Yeah, like, when he you was post... a part of it last year. Yeah. Or two years ago. Two years ago. Yeah. Um, it's not just yeah. knitting and crochet. I should clarify, there are a, uh, a ton of other designers as well. It's not just all knitting. There are a lot of crochet yeah. designers, which is really great. Um, and it's it's just a, it's a craft along, a gift along. It's, yeah. It's meant to celebrate making for other people. Mm -hmm. And that's that's the whole point of giving and, and all of that. If you are not a Ravelry user, there are a lot of other gift alongs going on on Instagram and Lovecrafts and on people's personal sites. And I highly recommend you check those out. Find your favorite designers, reach out to them, see what they're doing for the holidays. Uh, and I appreciate any support you can give me during the holidays as well. That's, yeah, when does it start? The sale period starts on Tuesday, November 24th, okay. and I believe it ends on the last day of November, but I'm not 100% sure. And then okay. the gift along uh, goes all the way to New Year's, and you are eligible for prizes uh, as you post your finished uh, projects on the Ravelry group until New Year's. That's the cutoff. So make sure you take pictures of your gifts before you give them away, send them in the mail, yeah. and um, update your project pages on Ravelry as you go. And I really love this event because it gets me in the spirit of, of gifting. Mm -hmm. Actually, this yarn, Ooh. I used so much of this yarn. Two years ago, I made slippers for all of our friends, and this is the yarn I used. One of these oh, was right. a pair of yes, slippers. All that little, yeah. yeah, and I just made a new pair for Travis because he wore his slippers out and, <laughs> yeah. and really loved them. He loves them, yeah. yeah. Okay, that was the knitting nook all done. Thanks. And now <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to pass it over to Louie for the crochet corner. In the crochet corner with his two thumbs pointed at his silly face. It's Louie's loop. So this crochet corner, uh, like I said, is going to be a little bit shorter just because I went a little crazy last month. I kind of tried to pull it back a little bit this month. Um, a lot of my new patterns have to do with the burbs, which you might have noticed from last episode, um, these little cute crocheted pigeons. Oh, wait, they're not pigeons. Is it a pigeon? Ah, it's a burb. <laughs> it's a barb. So these are little secret agents dressed as other birds. This is the newest pattern that just came out. Um, uh, the pigeon specifically just came out, but I actually have a whole bunch of other new ones uh, like a little turkey. This one is a pattern that is, um, it's actually out right now. And... Just in time for Thanksgiving. Just in time for Thanksgiving. Of course, he is also a burp. <laughs> yeah. Uh, me, me, me. And I've kind of been addicted to making different kinds of burps. Uh, so here we have a little duck that I am working on a pattern for. I'm working on a pattern for all these ones. The only so ones out birds. right now are these two, but I'm actually doing a vote on which uh, of the burbs you want to me to make a pattern for next time. So if you are a Club Crochet member and you go to the homepage, uh, there's actually a vote where you can vote on which one you want me to make next. Uh, my, I know my vote. What's your vote? Well, I'll show them all and then you tell us your vote. So the next one uh, that I want to show is this little owl who is... Uh, I love him. Yeah, he's actually my vote, personally. I love him. He's so cute. He reminds me of Hedwig. Um, I was going to say that, too, but I didn't want to be cliche. Yeah. <laughs> I love... I did, like, weird color changes on the face, uh, and I did this, like... See how it has stitches around the outside? Uh -huh. That's actually done, like, after you make the face. It's, it's really cool. It's not sewn on. Nice. It's actually made that way. And he's a burp. And he's a burp, of course. 
Uh, and then the next one is this little humming burb. I love the beak. That's uh, it's a really cool way to make the beak where you use a pipe cleaner and you wind around it and stuff. Um, and I love his tail because his tail is like a little heart. Aww. Yeah. So when he poops on you, so it's when, out of yeah, love. He loves you when he poops on you. <laughs> uh, and I love the burb under it. Oh, got, I love butt. it too because yeah. you did the coat. That is yeah. so clever because you can still see the white. Oh yeah. my gosh. And the red is supposed to symbolize a lot of uh, hummingbirds have this like um, red like neck frills, so that's kind of what I was trying to do there. I think I need to work on the pattern a little bit because it because it kind of splits in a little. I don't know. It needs it needs some work, but it's very. Cute. It's a great prototype. Yes. Uh, the next one we got a little eagle. He reminds me of speaking of Jim Henson. He reminds me of Sam the Eagle, uh, who is the political oh, eagle in the Muppets. I was gonna do a an impression, but I don't <laughs> think I should. <laughs> I won't do very good. Uh, and then and then a cardinal. The cardinal is definitely going to come out in winter because yeah. it is a very wintry bird. I don't think yeah. it really is a winter bird, but I it makes me think of Christmas. Same. I associate it with, with December and January. Mm -hmm. I, and you know why? I think I know why. My grandma is a big bird person. Yes. And she has a bird clock in her house. I love it. And I think the cardinal is at noon. Mm. And so oh. I think like 12... Mm -hmm. I, or the beginning, I think. So when I think of 12, I think of December and January right. the beginning. I don't know. That's where my brain yeah. goes. Yeah, I'm trying to think of other ones to do. I need to do, I want to do a sparrow and a goose. Where's I want the to do chicken? A peacock, a chicken. I have to do a chicken. He I can't believe I haven't done a chicken yet. So my vote was an owl, but now it's chicken. Now it's chicken. Now it's chicken. I want to kind of symbolize, I want, I want to kind of work off the, um, there's a Fall Guys chicken that I really like. So I kind of want to work off that one. Um, the next thing, uh, so that's my latest design. Um, my Now my latest selfish uh, stitch, selfish crochet. Uh, and I am very happy with my selfish crochet this month. I've been meaning to do a lot more of these uh, in my past, but, uh, well, I'll just show you. This is Jack Gurgle. Hello, I'm Jack Gurgle. Uh, I am a uh, friend of the podcast, uh, long time watcher, long time listener, first time uh, puppet, <laughs> and it's it's a pleasure to meet you. Thank you for being our guest today. Oh, you're very welcome. Oh, you're the camera's so... over there. Camera's oh. over there. Cam there you go. There you go. You're very pretty in the camera. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So this is my selfish crochet, and I'm super proud of it. Um, What's really cool is this, this is all like one piece. I mean, the nose, ears, and arms are all sewn on. Uh, I still need to add little arm rods to like control the arms a little bit so you can like kind of control them as you're going. Um, but what's really cool is it's all like sewn. It's, it's, I made a mouth mechanism that's sewn in. You can't see the mouth mechanism, but there's a... There's, can, I, can, I get, can I get in there? Yeah. So there's a tube that actually holds on to your thumb and it's attached to the front of the mouth. So it makes it a lot easier to like open and close the mouth so you can like... It kind of like talks like this a little bit. Talks like this. Yeah, and then it's you more have... about the open. Yeah. Yeah. So I was I was in a production of uh, Avenue Q, mm -hmm. a puppet musical. I did it for two years, and uh, I'm getting flashbacks now. Yeah. Trying to. Oh, we're definitely gonna. This you're gonna be a puppeteer. Uh, I'm gonna be okay. making a lot of these and doing some little sketches. I think. Yeah. The idea of him was I wanted to have a halftime show host. For my live streams, so if you're, I am the show, baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's great. You're amazing. <laughs> uh, I like his little earrings. He's got oh little God, um, yes. safety or uh, yeah, safety, pins, safety yeah. pins for his earrings. Um, yeah, so he's just first of. I'm sure there's going to be many. Uh, I don't know where I'm going to keep them all, but I like making him dance. It is definitely uh, the introduction to a whole new wave of crocheted projects. This is not your myself. first crocheted puppet. No, it's not. I have another one over there. Should I bring it over? No, no. I'm just pointing it out. Oh yeah. That you've been doing. You've maybe folks don't know that this is something that you really love to do, and hence right. the Jim Henson yeah. and all that. Yeah, I, I mean, I just love puppets in general. This is not my first puppet, but it's my first puppet <laughs> in years. Look at it. Tickle his belly button. <laughs> <laughs> What I I think 
what I really like is is I like that you can see the crochet stitches too. Because my last puppet was made with really fuzzy yarn, uh, so you couldn't really tell that it was crocheted. But I kind of like that it, that you can tell it's crocheted. It brings a lot of character to him. And texture. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, first of many. I'm very, very proud of him. Jack Gurgle. So the next uh, thing I want to talk about is my works in progress. So I mean, it's not really a work in progress, but it kind of is. Um, I've been crocheting a lot of uh, mushrooms uh, this month. Just, I don't know why, but November just feels like mushrooms. Animal Crossing does mushrooms. Um, uh, I wish they were finger. I mean, they were meant to be finger. Posts. Yeah, they're not. They're I'm just not. shoving my pinky in here. Yeah. So I've just been kind of. I just enjoy crocheting these mushrooms. At night, and so I've been trying to think about what to do with them. So this is why it's a work in progress. So I bought this uh, pot a few months ago. Oh, almost like a year ago. Yeah, I guess it has been a long time. COVID. <laughs> Anyhow, so I bought this pot a long time ago, and I was thinking it'd be really fun to do kind of like a little scene with the um, like grass on the top here, and then with these mushrooms on it, and then like a little mushroom man maybe reading a book under it or something like that. Cute! Yeah. So I thought it'd be kind of like a fun, like, um... Or even a goblin. Yeah. Just for contrast of colors. Just, just something. This this one is supposed to, like, hang over oh, the other like ones like umbrella. that. Yeah, and then, like, I'd love to make it look like it's raining, but I, I don't know how I would do that. I don't either. Yeah. But, yes, so there's my work in progress. I don't know what I'm going to do just yet, but it's, uh... It's gonna be something. And then next is my upcoming designs. Now, Ooh. the big upcoming design, which I'm so proud of this design, is presents. So, um, I love presents. I'm gonna be, I have all these crochet presents. These are all just rough drafts. I'm still working on the design you. a little bit. Um, but this is gonna be coming out soon. This is actually kind of a collaboration pattern with another artist that's name is, uh, he goes by Sir Pearl Gray. Um, I, I've done work with him in the past, but he came to me saying he wanted to do a balloon, like from Animal Crossing, that's hanging on a little present. So this is what I made. He's gonna, he's doing the balloon, I'm doing the present, and then we're going, it's gonna be, maybe this will be actually one of the wall art, because that would be kind of fun, just like a hanging balloon, you know? I, I could see it hanging from the ceiling. Yeah, like yeah. Um, like an Animal Crossing balloon flying mm -hmm. by, yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so this is my uh, my upcoming design for December. Uh, this is actually going to be the kit, so if you aren't a Club Crochet member and you want to get a kit, uh, sign up now. Um, you'll get the kit for these guys. And each one of these actually have something in it. I'm going to be doing a giveaway during my live stream, but that's going to be past... Uh, we're filming this before the live stream, so sorry. Um, but uh, I do want to show you what's in at least one of these, at least this one. Um, so... Uh, what I think is really cool is some of these aren't this way. Like this one, you tie it around the Like a real present. ribbon. Like a real ribbon, yeah. And this one, you actually, um, there's actually holes on the bottom so that the ties come out from it so you it, don't have so to. So threads through the present. Yeah, so that way it can like sit flat. Um, so in this gift, I'm just going to untie it. I'm so excited. Rip what it you, open! Rip what it do you open. think's in this present? Rip Go ahead and comment open. right now. Let me know what you think's in this present before I show you it's in the present. Ready? Anticipation. It's another present. <laughs> <laughs> Did you expect that? You told me this and but I you forgot. Totally forgot. I yeah. totally forgot. So what forgot. do you think's in this present? I don't know anymore. Do you think it's another present? No. It's not. So I'll go open that present. I, this is what I really like about this pattern is that you can make it really tiny. Like, look how tiny this little box is, and it looks so cool. Look how crisp the edges are. I did like this one little chain in the edges, and it made a huge difference. I don't know. I'm just a big fan Isn't of this. Isn't he cute? So He's so cute. In, the, <laughs> in this present, uh, I hope Taylor doesn't watch this because this is going to be probably a gift for him. Is a little skull. A keychain skull. Yeah, I want to. I just didn't know what to put in here, really. Oh, well, uh, it fits. Yeah, but it fits so perfectly. So a little keychain skull. This is going to be. Whoop, this is gonna be a Christmas gift for someone. If we can find it. Oh. Yeah. And then uh, these ones all have things. You dropped in. it again. Yeah, I know. <laughs> We're not cutting this out. Well, now I can't. These ones all have special things in them. This is the one that I'm gonna be doing the giveaway for, so I don't wanna open that one. But no, 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 no. each one of these guys. I can guys, feel there, there is something significant yeah. in here. Yeah. Each one of them have something kind of fun. So, Ooh. yeah. They're mine now. They're, <laughs> you don't get them back. You want? No, uh, no take backsies. 
Anyhow, so this is my upcoming pattern. I'm very excited about it. Uh, yeah, so make sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel, all that fun stuff. Also, just subscribe to the YouTube channel if you like this content. Mm -hmm. uh, and like it down below. Please like this video. It helps it get noticed by a lot of other um, people that are browsing YouTube mm -hmm. that are like, oh, I want to watch a podcast. This is how you do it. And like even it. better, you can share it with your friends and family. Yes, that really, and, and in any knitting and crochet groups that mm -hmm. you really like or anything like that, share it. Um, and then another upcoming, it's not really an upcoming design because it's already out, but I'm going to be adding these kits to my shop uh, very soon for a little crocheted Santa. Oh my goodness. And the idea here, I mean, you can make it just like a regular crocheted Santa, like just sitting up. But the idea with this bag is that he's supposed to be a tree ornament. Wanna, so he goes I like, wanna this. like this. Like this. Yes. Yeah. I am the tree. Yes. So, yeah, so the idea is he's like kind of supposed to be hanging upside down and and yeah um, I'm really proud of this pattern I really like the fuzz on the face and I don't think uh, a lot of people n know that I came out with it this was actually last year's uh, kit so I wanted to kind of re-up it I'm doing a, some subtle changes to the design uh, and gonna be re-releasing it you can see his his ball on the back of him is actually a yarn ball <laughs> I love that yeah. is there coal in here uh, yes <laughs> It's not just stuffing. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so this is it's not technically an upcoming pattern, but it is an upcoming kit. So if you are looking for this kit, check out my shop. I have a lot of kits in there, including the pigeon. Pigeon and the turkey so are actually kits. kits right now. So yeah. many kits. I'm kind of just trying to like go go ham on the kits because it's just kind of fun for me and eat. Uh -huh. And like, I, I know a lot of people want different kinds of kits. And yeah. anyhow. Yeah. Uh, so I guess that kind of feeds itself into the shop update, uh, which there's not really much other than like new kits. Uh, also, though, a lot of people were asking about the T-shirt from last episode. The T-shirt he was wearing. Last yeah, episode. not this T-shirt. By the way, this is a kind of a fun T-shirt that I made. I'm a hooker on YouTube. On the back it says, Louis Loops. Louis Loops. Um, but a lot of people were asking about last episode's t-shirt, which was a an ogre in a little pocket. I call it a pocket monster because Pokemon. God, you know, oh yeah. My God. <laughs> and he's holding the crochet hook and stuff. Uh, so I'm it. adding that to my uh, my shop. It should be in the shop by the time this episode comes out, but if I'm really lazy, then it will be up a little later. Poke him. If it's not there. Yeah, if you really, yeah, go ahead and I've been telling him to get it on the website yeah. for a it's month. It's just, I'm having a hard time figuring out how to sell sh shirts on the website. I don't know. Uh, it's a whole thing. But there uh, are going, there. that shirt should be there, and I should be adding a few other t-shirts. So if you are interested in getting some t-shirts or some stickers or stuff like that, mm -hmm. uh, check out my merch. Please. And if you want this t-shirt, I guess let me know. I, I'm not really anticipating that many people are going to be like, oh, I want to be, I want to have a t-shirt that says I'm a hooker, but maybe people will. And if you do, let me know. Uh, more people that ask for it, the more likely it's, I'm going to be to put it in my shop, in all honesty. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you like this video, again, please like it down below. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever we come out with new episodes. And uh, share it with anybody that you think might really enjoy this podcast or enjoy us in general. Mm -hmm. uh, and we really want to say thank you so much to everybody who has watched our podcast in the past who commented on it. Oh my God, thank you so much. We got our first fan mail. Yes, it meant the <laughs> world to us. Every comment that uh, gets put on these, we read every single one of them and they brighten our day mm -hmm. so much. You you seriously have no idea. It really means a lot. Just, just watching it in general, it just means a lot that people mm -hmm. care. Uh, and yeah, it's very cool of you. We hope you have a wonderful and safe Thanksgiving holiday. Please take care of yourselves and your loved ones. Be safe, be careful, and we hope you have a great break from whatever's happening in the world. <laughs> yes, yes. Enjoy your break from the world. <laughs> I know we will. Happy knitting. Yep. Oh, and happy hooking. And we'll see you next time. Pasta la pizza. Bye. Bye.